If you think household robots are still 20 or 30 years away, this video may completely change your mind. Welcome to Tesla Car World. Today, we're not talking about electric vehicles, not about robo-taxi, and definitely not about a flashy made-for-show robot demo. Instead, what you're about to see is the most comprehensive and honest overview yet of the Tesla bot Optimus Gen 3, the product Elon Musk calls Tesla's most important creation, more important than electric cars or even full self-driving. Our next generation has 22 degrees of freedom. Um, it will be able to play the piano. So it's, it's really like, wow. In just the past two years, Tesla Optimus has gone through three major design overhauls and four hand upgrades. From a shaky, barely functional prototype, it has evolved into a robot operating autonomously inside Tesla factories. And now, it is entering a fully autonomous phase, with no tele-operation required. Most recently, Elon Musk has confirmed that Optimus is nearing its official commercial release with the Gen 3 version. It features human-level dexterity, can learn tasks simply by watching videos, and is capable of working continuously for 8 to 10 hours. Within the next two years alone, it has the potential to reshape the global labor market as we know it. Therefore, in today's episode, we will break down three key questions together. Why is Optimus Gen 3 a genuine turning point, rather than just another empty promise from Elon Musk? What are the five upgrades that allow it to outperform every humanoid robot currently on the market? And why is Tesla able to manufacture it at a cost equivalent to that of a used car? What has caused the entire tech industry to pause in disbelief is not merely its design. Musk has confirmed that Tesla can produce Optimus at a cost of around $10,000, an almost unimaginable figure when compared to existing humanoid robots, which are priced between $150,000 and $250,000. In order to make it cost like you know, $10,000 or $20,000. With the Gen 3 version, Elon Musk is confident that Optimus has become a robot capable of operating autonomously within Tesla factories, performing tasks that were previously exclusive to human workers. And now, Genesis 3 marks a true inflection point. A transition from semi-automated robots to fully autonomous ones, requiring no remote control and no constant human supervision. To understand why Optimus Gen 3 matters, we need to be clear about one thing. This is not just another iteration. It is not Gen 2 with better hands or Gen 2.5 with smoother walking. Optimus Gen 3 represents a structural transition from demonstration to deployment. Until now, every version of Optimus required some level of human intervention. Teleoperation was not a flaw, it was a necessity. Teaching a humanoid robot to operate safely in the real world is orders of magnitude more complex than building a robot that can move inside a lab. Tesla understood this early and chose a slow, data-driven approach. Gen 3 changes that equation. Elon Musk has stated clearly that Optimus Gen 3 is designed to be fully autonomous. That means no remote operator correcting movements, no human behind the curtain. The robot must perceive, decide, and act entirely on its own. This single shift unlocks everything else, scalability, economic viability, and real-world usefulness. For years, Optimus was treated as an experiment, an ambitious one but still a prototype. Earlier versions could walk, lift objects, and perform basic tasks, yet behind every smooth movement was a human operator correcting errors, guiding actions, and compensating for what the robot could not yet do on its own. That limitation was not a failure of engineering but a recognition of reality. The physical world is unstructured, unpredictable, and unforgiving. Teaching a machine to function autonomously within it is one of the hardest problems in artificial intelligence. Optimus Gen 3 marks the point at which Tesla believes that problem has crossed a critical threshold. The most fundamental shift with Gen 3 is not a faster gait or a more refined exterior, but autonomy. Elon Musk has stated plainly that this version is designed to operate without teleoperation. That single change transforms Optimus from a controlled machine into an independent agent. A robot that requires constant human oversight cannot scale, cannot be economically viable, and cannot meaningfully integrate into daily life. A robot that perceives its environment, makes decisions, and acts on them independently becomes something else entirely. It becomes a worker, not in the metaphorical sense, but in the literal one. Everything Tesla is attempting with Optimus depends on that distinction. Autonomy alone, however, is not enough. A robot that can think but cannot be built at scale is irrelevant. 
This is where Tesla's approach diverges sharply from most robotics companies. Elon Musk has openly acknowledged that Optimus Gen 2 was nearly impossible to manufacture, and that admission reveals more than it seems. Many companies can create impressive prototypes. Very few can design machines that are optimized from the beginning for mass production. Tesla's experience in electric vehicles has shaped its robotics strategy in a way competitors cannot easily replicate. Optimus is not assembled from off-the-shelf components. Its motors, actuators, batteries, power electronics, and AI hardware are all designed in-house, with manufacturing constraints considered at every step. This vertical integration is what allows Tesla to talk seriously about producing Optimus at a cost of roughly $10,000 per unit. At first glance, that number appears unrealistic, especially when compared to other humanoid robots that cost several hundred thousand dollars. But Tesla already manufactures the most expensive parts of Optimus at scale for its vehicles. High-efficiency motors, battery cells, AI computers, cameras, and sensors are not experimental technologies within Tesla's ecosystem. They are mature products refined through years of iteration. Optimus is, in many ways, a recombination of systems Tesla already knows how to build, arranged into a humanoid form. Manufacturability also explains why Tesla has moved slowly and deliberately. Each redesign of Optimus has not only improved performance but simplified assembly. Every reduction in part count, every integration of components, and every improvement in durability pushes the robot closer to something that can be produced by the millions rather than the dozens. Without this foundation, autonomy would be meaningless. A robot that works but cannot be built cheaply enough is a technological curiosity, not a revolution. Once manufacturing constraints are addressed, the next bottleneck becomes interaction with the real world. And this is where Optimus's hands play a decisive role. Walking has long dominated public perception of humanoid robots, but locomotion is only half the problem. The real challenge lies in manipulation. Human environments are designed for human hands. Tools, handles, switches, and objects assume a level of dexterity that most robots cannot achieve. Optimus Gen 3 is expected to approach human-level manual dexterity with more than 20 degrees of freedom in each hand. This does not merely allow it to grip objects more securely. It allows it to interact with the world in ways that were previously inaccessible to machines. At this level of dexterity, tasks that were once considered impractical for robots begin to move into the realm of feasibility. Folding laundry, preparing food, handling fragile items, or using tools designed for human fingers are no longer edge cases, but core capabilities. Elon Musk has suggested that Optimus could eventually perform tasks as delicate as playing a musical instrument, not as a novelty, but as a demonstration of control and precision. The point is not entertainment, it is generality. A robot that can manipulate objects with the same adaptability as a human can operate in almost any environment without the need for specialized infrastructure. Dexterity alone, however, does not solve the problem of adaptability. Traditional robots excel at repetition but fail when conditions change. Tesla's approach to this problem mirrors its strategy with self-driving cars. Instead of programming every possible action explicitly, Optimus is designed to learn from observation. Musk has confirmed that Optimus can watch videos and learn tasks in a way analogous to humans. This is not a marketing flourish. It is a fundamental shift in how robotic skills are acquired. If a task can be demonstrated visually, it can potentially be learned. This capability radically alters the economics of robotics. Historically, deploying robots required extensive setup, custom programming, and controlled environments. Optimus replaces that model with one centered on data and iteration. The more it observes, the more it learns. Over time, its capabilities expand rather than stagnate. This approach allows Optimus to generalize skills across tasks instead of being locked into narrow functions. It also means that Optimus improves continuously after deployment rather than becoming obsolete. Power and endurance are equally critical. A robot that requires frequent recharging or downtime cannot compete economically with human labor. Optimus Gen 3 is expected to use Tesla's 4680 battery cells, which offer higher energy density and improve structural efficiency. Earlier versions already demonstrated several hours of operation, but Gen 3 pushes this further, with the ability to operate for most of a workday and potentially beyond, depending on task intensity. More importantly, Optimus manages its energy intelligently, consuming minimal power during idle periods and scaling usage dynamically during movement and manipulation. 
the ability for Optimus to recharge itself without human assistance completes the picture. When combined with autonomy and learning, this creates a system capable of sustained, independent operation. At that point, the robot ceases to be a tool that must be managed and becomes a form of infrastructure, capable of functioning continuously within homes, factories, and institutions. The economic implications of such a system are difficult to overstate. Musk has suggested that Optimus could be several times more productive than a human worker, not because it moves faster, but because it does not tire, does not require breaks, and does not suffer from skill degradation. A robot does not quit, does not call in sick, and does not need to be retrained when procedures change. Once deployed, it can operate continuously, adapting through software updates and experience, rather than formal training programs. At scale, even conservative assumptions lead to transformative outcomes. A robot priced below $20,000 that can generate consistent monthly value would pay for itself in a short period and then continue producing economic output for years. This is why Musk frames Optimus not as a product line, but as a platform. The addressable market is not limited to households or factories. It encompasses the global labor market itself. While household chores are the most relatable application, they represent only the surface of Optimus's potential. In industrial settings, Optimus can perform repetitive tasks, manage logistics, and assist with quality control. In healthcare, it could support elderly care, assist patients with mobility, monitor basic health metrics, and reduce the burden on overstretched systems. Musk has even suggested that Optimus could one day assist in surgery, a provocative idea rooted in the robot's potential for precision rather than speculation. There are also environments where humans should not work at all. Disaster zones, hazardous industrial sites, and dangerous recovery operations are places where robots like Optimus could operate without risk to human life. In these contexts, autonomy is not merely convenient. It is essential. How can Tesla keep the production cost of the Tesla Bot Gen 3 at around $10,000? Ahead of the release of its 2025 financial results, Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced that the company will begin selling its humanoid robot, Optimus, in 2026. In fact, according to the earnings report, Optimus has already started performing automated tasks, such as battery handling, at one of Tesla's facilities. Tesla will have genuinely useful humanoid robots in low production volumes for internal use next year and, hopefully, will achieve high volume production for other companies in 2026, Elon Musk personally confirmed earlier on X. During Tesla earnings call, Musk also estimated that long-term demand for general-purpose humanoid robots would exceed 20 billion units, a figure he arrived at by combining the world's 8 billion people, each potentially wanting to own a robot, with industrial use cases. These timelines, while broadly outlined, and these projections should be treated with caution. A great deal can change between now and then, and if Optimus is indeed delayed, it would not be the first time one of Musk's products has been affected by shifting timelines. As early as the initial stages, Musk had suggested that humanoid robot production could begin as soon as 2023. After the 2024 Tesla annual stockholder meeting, it became increasingly clear that the most important story unfolding at Tesla is no longer centered on electric vehicles, but on Optimus. The humanoid robot that Elon Musk believes could eventually redefine the company's entire valuation. Musk has gone so far as to suggest that Optimus alone could help push Tesla toward a $25 trillion valuation, a figure that would place it above more than half of the current S and P 500 combined. While this number initially sounds extreme, the underlying logic becomes far more convincing when examining how Tesla is approaching the problem of humanoid robotics, particularly its ability to manufacture Optimus at a cost of roughly $10,000 per unit. What truly stunned the robotics industry was not Tesla's decision to build a humanoid robot, but its insistence on designing Optimus from the ground up for mass production. Most humanoid robots today are expensive, fragile, and impractical, often costing hundreds of thousands of dollars because they rely on custom parts and small-scale manufacturing. Tesla, by contrast, is applying the same manufacturing philosophy that allowed it to disrupt the automotive industry. Instead of treating Optimus as a niche robotics project, Tesla is integrating it directly into its existing industrial ecosystem, one that already produces millions of vehicles annually. This approach gives Tesla an enormous advantage. The company already designs and manufactures electric motors, power electronics, battery packs, AI computers, 
cameras, and end-to-end -end neural networks, precisely the components required to build a capable humanoid robot. While competitors must establish entirely new supply chains, Tesla can repurpose and adapt technologies it has refined for over a decade. As a result, Optimus is not built from rare or exotic components, but from scalable, cost-optimized systems that Tesla already knows how to produce efficiently. This is the foundation that makes a $10,000 production cost not only plausible, but strategically achievable. Elon Musk has emphasized that humanoid robots only make sense if they are affordable. A robot that costs $100,000 or more may impress engineers, but it will never achieve mass adoption. Tesla is therefore engineering Optimus with cost reduction as a core design constraint rather than an afterthought. While early versions will inevitably be more expensive, Musk has made it clear that large-scale manufacturing is the key to driving costs down, just as it did with Tesla's vehicles. In the near term, Tesla plans to deploy Optimus internally, placing thousands of robots inside its own factories as early as 2025. This strategy allows Tesla to refine the robot in real-world conditions, collect vast amounts of training data, and improve reliability long before Optimus is sold directly to consumers. From an economic perspective, the internal deployment of Optimus is already compelling. A humanoid robot that can work around the clock, operate with extreme precision, recharge in minutes, and avoid the costs associated with human labor quickly becomes cheaper over its lifetime than a human employee. Even before external sales begin, Optimus has the potential to generate enormous value simply by reducing operational costs within Tesla's factories. This internal use case also accelerates learning, enabling Optimus to improve faster than robots confined to controlled demonstrations or limited customer trials. Optimus is not being designed as a static machine, but as a platform that improves continuously through software. Musk has confirmed that users will be able to customize aspects of the robot such as personality and voice, and that Optimus will learn user preferences naturally over time. Rather than requiring months or years of explicit training, Optimus is intended to understand context, observe human behavior, and generalize skills across tasks. Its next-generation hands, featuring 22 degrees of freedom, approach the dexterity of the human hand, and enable delicate tasks such as playing the piano or threading a needle. This level of manipulation places Optimus at the leading edge of humanoid robotics and underscores Tesla's emphasis on real-world usefulness rather than theatrical demonstrations. If Tesla can manufacture humanoid robots at a cost of around $10,000, would this completely disrupt the global labor market, or would it only replace certain types of jobs? Please share your opinion in the comments section below this video. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe now so you don't miss the next breaking Tesla update. It's coming in just two days. If you want to explore more exciting information about Tesla EV or Tesla Bot, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss our latest videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.